Welcome to Learning Objective 4 of Salutary Neglect. So here we're going to discuss the Treaty of Paris of 1763 and show how and why the treaty had such a profound impact on salutary neglect, uh, basically ending it, and hence the relationship between uh, England and its colonies. Um, so um, from the late 1600s until May of 1756, the English and French were engaged in on-again, off-again power struggles in Europe. That finally led to the conflict in the New World over uh, basically the Mississippi Valley. Uh, the conflict was called the French and Indian War, sometimes referred to as uh, the Seven Years' War, um, and it lasted until 1763. By 1762, it appeared that uh, England was on the verge of winning the war and upsetting the balance of power in Europe and the New World. Consequently, Spain entered the war on the side of France in order to protect her colonial interests and hope to maintain the balance of power. Uh, basically, they didn't want a superpower in England like Great Britain, which it would become after this war. Spain's aid was, however, uh, too little too late, and she joined France on the losing side, which um, Spain would have to pay a price for that. The war came to an end and peace was restored in 1763 with the Treaty of Paris. The peace talks were at Paris with representatives from England, France, and Spain. The treaty broke the balance of power in Europe and the New World and made England the dominant power in both areas. Consequently, England would now have the time and the need to spend on its colonies. So as a result of the Treaty of Paris um, concluded in 1763, England won um, from fr France all of Canada and all of the interior east of the Mississippi. So all of this area here, all through here, um, um, except the port of um, New Orleans right here. So France would be able to... Uh, maintain control of this area and this very important port here. France retained uh, fishing rights on the Newfoundland banks and two small islands as fishing bases uh, there. And England returned her the captured West Indian islands um, of Montague and uh, Guadalupe. Spain gave up East and West Floridas uh, to the English in return for the restoration of Cuba. Um, as a result of them backing up France um, during this war. Unfortunately, the war, as well as the treaty, also created a need for England to spend more uh, money and time in administrating her colonies. Let me back up a bit. The, um, the, the need is going to be economic, but the time was now England isn't going to have have to deal with France, it's not going to have to deal with Spain, either in Europe or in the New World. So now it's got time to pay attention to its colonies. The economic need is going to come from being the victor of this war because it's going to cost a lot of money. So the new ro role would uh, produce a great financial strain on the English and would result in a direct change in their American colonial policy. The new, far larger dominion would be much more expensive to maintain, and England's national debt would double between 1754 and 1763. So because of this cost, uh, England was basically forced to end salutary neglect of its colonies by enforcing a more vigorous mercantile policy, um, which made the colonies pay for themselves. Um, and we'll go into more details in a later lecture on this. But basically, that's the, what's at play here. This, these colonies uh, cost money uh, to administer, and um, England has got to get something out of these colonies as far as revenue is concerned. British official, officials were also distressed by the reluctance of the colonists to support the war. During the war, American shippers using fraudulent papers developed a very profitable uh, traffic with enemy ports of the Spanish and French 
uh, West Indies. They just bas they basically became smugglers. This treasonable trade in foodstuff actually occurred at the same time the British Navy was trying to subdue them. By the end of the war, the English authorities were forced to halt all supplies from New England and the middle colonies to stop this kind of trade. It appears that the colonists demanded the rights and privileges of Englishmen without the duties and responsibility of Englishmen, um, meaning they were there to support England as an empire. So the American attitude toward England was profoundly affected after the removal of the French threat in Canada. While the French threat had been hovering in the north and the west, the colonists had been forced to cling um, close to the wings of, well, basically Mother Hen. Now that that threat had been removed, they developed a new spirit, or a reinforced spirit of independence. The efforts that had been undertaken to change the sy system provoked a major crisis uh, within the British Empire. The colonists realized that their welfare was not a fundamental consideration for uh, the English and that they, for all practical purposes, had become independent on their own during the years preceding the French-Indian War. This realization led to the American War for Independence when England tried to enforce its new policy of ending salutary neglect, which, which will be the focus of a future lecture, this process. Basically, from 1763 to 1776, what we see unfold is um, conflict after conflict of, of protests and boycotts and orga a political organization and unification that results in the American War for Independence. All right, that concludes uh, salutary neglect. It's uh, beginnings, it's, 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 uh, the, it's dynamics, and it's endings. So I'll see you in a future lecture. Take care. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns.